Facebook has now, uh, researchers at Cornell University have figured out that Facebook can actually predict whether you and your partner will break up. Uh, there's something called the dispersion theory. Let's look at it. Uh, this is the Facebook theory of dispersion as uh, written by the Cornell researchers. Uh, they took the data sets of 1.3 million Facebook users listed as being in a relationship and found that the more well-connected their mutual friends were, the more likely they were to break up. Now, I thought this was kind of interesting because it I, offhand, I would have thought if you have a lot of mutual friends, it means you have a lot of mutual interests and a lot of connections, maybe with family or whatever, and that that would give you more reason to stay together. But this actually proved the reverse. I think if you have a lot of mutual friends, you're that much more likely to wind up out at dinner one night going, wait, you told him I like that? <laughs> <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, much as we need separation of church and state, there is some need for separation of family and social life. Uh, and, th th you know, there's some overlap. Of course there's some overlap. But, you know, sometimes I like to just go out and spend time with people who I have a separate existence with, a separate set of interests, and then when I'm done, I go home and untie my wife. <laughs> 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 All right, well, on that note, let's take a couple uh, look at some of the other findings here. Uh, so couples with high dispersion have mutual friends who are not well-connected, and couples with low dispersion have mutual friends who are well-connected. Uh, now, what I think is interesting about this, and I think you'll buy into this, is that this isn't totally a scientific survey because the subset of people that you're talking about here are all people that are on Facebook, which maybe only a certain type of person and is on Facebook and also in the first people place, on right? Facebook who have chosen to yes. display that they're in a relationship, which is, I think, another subset, right? I've never once said whether or not I'm in a relationship on Facebook. So I they mean, wouldn't have to that. ask you about that. Yes, right? and by exactly. the way, what's the situation? <laughs> so uh, the issue is they wouldn't have that data point on me, right. you know? So, I mean, it's, I think it's a fascinating study because there's so much interesting data. It's a big data study, right? You, mm -hmm. can, you can look on Facebook, you can see who is linked to whom, and then you can look at shared friends within their circle. That data is available, and you can compare it and, and see if you can figure something out. Now, I, I wonder, you know, how long did they wait to see if these people broke up? It's one thing to say, people with more mutual friends will break Bro up. Well, in what length of time? Or yeah. if you wait longer, will everybody break up? Someone's I mean, that, gonna die. Right, I mean, that, that's, yeah. I think, a likely outcome, too. Um, I, but there is something also to be said, I think, about this hypothesis that if you have your own life, you're going to ha have a stronger relationship with your partner because you're not constantly going to be around one another. And you're going to have a sense of, of independence and a sense of personal identity, which I think is very healthy. Right. And then you go home and untie them, as you said, yeah. after, uh, after they're out. My wife and I are inherently antisocial. Uh, I go out to do things purely for professional reasons, really, and I try to be charming and I try to look like I'm enjoying other people's company. But I'm done really a perfectly uh, manageable th job. Thank here. you, but I'm really the truth is I'm way too much of a narcissist to to care. <laughs> I, you know, uh, later on today I'll be saying I was on some show with a guy and a, a very I don't know her name, <laughs> very attractive woman. Well, thank um, you. Yeah. That's, that's that's you know Still that's that's how much I'm taking in the nice. information around <laughs> me as as I as I go out into the world. Um, and all my point is that despite the fact that my wife and I have no friends, we do have high dispersion. <laughs> <laughs> There's some point there. I don't so always know what I'm talking about when I start. It's yeah, fair, you, got, it's fair. you, you, got you have no friends and none of those nobodies Buddies. are mutual. That's my point. Oh, yes. Thank God we have a scientist here. None <laughs> of the people that I don't know know the people that my wife doesn't know. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> so how then, watch how I do this, will the marketers use this on Facebook? Ah. Because doesn't this all, this is exactly why so we're all So far they just told me I'm not allowed to breed with my dog. That, well, you mm -hmm. definitely can't do that. So now well, they I think maybe in Kentucky. They're going to target these individuals and say, get out, make new friends. Yes. It's less likely that you'll break up with your boyfriend if you do so. O or that they'll go the other way and say the, the people that are uh, more likely to break up, they're going to have the singles websites are going to be advertising on their <laughs> oh, page, right? They already know. They're going to yeah, start I believe, them. Right, there'll be a, a targeting of the Ashley Madison yeah. ads. Yeah. Oh, gross. Those are so gross. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Tell the people gross. what Ashley Madison Ashley is. Ashley Madison you? is uh, a dating As you're service. the one married person here, it's kind of interesting. So they're they're a dating service that <laughs> that uh, keeps sending me emails that say, don't waste your time, have an affair. Yeah. Don't be sad, have an affair, which is just, 
not helping at all you with anything I'm struggling with I'm in sure. my life right now. You see now. the billboards all over LA. It's so it's, gross. Yeah. It's so gross. So final thought on this. How much of all this digital stuff is, is really affecting our actual relationships? Like, when is it going to be? Like, are you going to have to Skype with someone before, you know, now you go on an app and meet somebody, but is it going to be you're going to have to video Skype with them first, and then you're going to have to text them? And like, are we really doing something this, fundamentally? There's something Orwellian yeah. about the idea that we call it social networking when what we're doing is sitting it's alone at home at a computer. <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, it's genuinely mind-bending to think that that's considered a social life. But your definition of alone is that there's nobody else in the room with you physically. And I think for, for a lot of young people, that's not their no. definition of alone anymore. And I think that there's a whole subset of the population who previously had a very difficult time connecting with individuals. You even made that point earlier about atheists, for example, growing up in the Bible Belt, not knowing anybody in their neighborhood who, who has you know similar views. You get online and now you can connect with people right. so I think that uh, you know there there are positive outcomes there are negative outcomes but to say how much of our, our new kind of digital world is affecting our relationships I, it's impossible to know it, I would say it in the same breath it's both impossible to know and it's completely affecting us. Yeah. There's no way that it couldn't. I don't know if it's positive, negative, or net neutral, but the way that we interact is is completely changed because we're all connected online. Hey guys, the Rubin Report's brought to you by Coupaw.com. They have up to 75% off pet treats, chews, toys, and more. And if you use code RR, you can get another 20%. That's a lot of percentage right there. I can't do that kind of math. Uh, the link is right down below, Coupaw.com, code RR.